So for this problem statement, we have the column is built up by gluing the two identical boards together. Determine the no maximum normal stress developed on the cross section when the eccentric force P equals 50 kilonewtons is applied. So here we see two identical boards of similar dimensions, 300 millimeters by 150 millimeters. And the second board is the exact same dimensions. Um, one thing to be careful of just to not cause any confusion this is a 250 millimeter dimension and then this portion here would be the 50 millimeter dimension from the top of this board to where that um, external force is being applied on the cross section here so it's asking us to solve for the maximum normal stress developed. Now, we know the axial stress is equivalent to the external load divided by the cross section, which is pretty straightforward and very easily we can solve for. However, since we have two geometries being essentially glued together at this interface here, we could essentially treat it as one solid geometry, right? And in this instance, the centroid of this geometry is going to be, let's just guesstimate about here, the centroid, right? And this is going to be considered the neutral axis. And since that lo external load being applied is not um, at the neutral axis, that means we're going to have a moment developed on this cross section. And whenever you have a moment, you also have a bending stress associated with that, which we already know the equation is equal to mc divided by the moment of inertia. So this in this problem, this is where we're going to be using the concept of superposition, which is the total stress is equivalent to the linear combination of the two. Or in other words, you just add them up, right? So the total stress is equivalent to the axial stress plus the bending stress. Now one thing to keep in mind, for the bending stress you have um, both a tensile stress and a compressive stress associated with it. So you have to keep in mind um, when calculating the total stress, are you adding up the compressive or the tensile stresses? So that's one thing to be careful of and it could lead you to solving the, getting the wrong answer. So just be mindful of that. So now, pretty straightforward to get the axial stress, right? It's just the force divided by the cross-sectional area. So let's go ahead and just solve for that one real quick. So you have the 50 kilonewtons divided by the cross-sectional area, and since we have two identical boards, right, we have the 0.3 meters times 0.15 meters is a cross-sectional area of one board, and you have two, so you just multiply by two to get the answer. And so your actual stress is equivalent to, so we have 555.6 kilopascals for the axial stress. Now on to calculating the bending stress. So first off, we have to go ahead and solve for the neutral axis. So let me go ahead and redraw the cross section just so it could be a little bit more clear. And so here's the cross section being drawn out. Um, and so let's just guesstimate that the neutral axis or the centroid of this geometry is about this location. So here's the neutral axis, right? Now, in this case, I'm going to decide my reference point being the bottom section of this geometry. And so from here to there, there's going to be Y bar or the location from the bottom to the neutral axis. And keep in mind when solving for the centroid, you're going to be use, utilizing this equation. So we see Y bar is equivalent to the summation of the centroid of each individual um, cross-sectional area times that area divided by the summation of all the areas of these. Since it's composed of two rectangles here, it's pretty straightforward. So let's go ahead and calculate that. Keep in mind, in this instance, I'm using the bottom location as the reference. So each individual area, the, the centroid, the location is going to be respect to that location here. And this one as well, from here all the way to here. And let me go ahead and name the areas, this one one and this one two, just for simplicity. And so we see for the first cross section um, area, we have the centroid being point, um, in this case, half of 150 millimeters or 75 millimeters, so 0 0.075 meters times the cross section um, times the area, 0.3 times 0.15 meters. 
And for the second, it's going to be half of the first rectangle, right? 150 millimeters plus another 150 millimeters to the bottom. So it's going to be 300 millimeters and times the, cro the cross section area divided by the total areas, which gives us a Y bar of 0.1875 meters. So this is the distance from the bottom to the centroid or the neutral axis location. This is what we're going to be using um, in order to calculate the moment. Since we know that external load is being applied 50 millimeters from this top portion downward, right? The force P 50 millimeters. So the moment in this particular case is going to be respect with the neutral axis. And so that's going to give us the external load times the distance for for where that load is being concentrated to the neutral axis. And so for the distance itself, we're going to need from this location here to the neutral axis, this distance D, right? So since we, and since we know the total dimension from the top to the bottom, and we already have Y bar, we have this 50 millimeters, it's going to be quite easy to solve for this D dimension. So let's go ahead and plug it in, which is 0.2125 meters. This is the distance D, and our moment is 10.625 kilonewtons meters. So we already have this for the equation of the bending stress. And the C location, we know that the greater value for the C in the bending stress equation, the higher the stress that's going to be developed. So in this instance, the neutral axis from to the top portion of it is actually the greater dimension, which is 0.2125 plus 0 0.05 meters. So that's going to be your C value there. Let me go ahead and write it down, which is 0.2 0.2625 meters here. And all that's left is to solve for the moment of inertia to have all the unknowns and solve for the bending stress. Now for the moment of inertia, if you guys recall, in this case, since we're dealing with multiple areas here and we have a centroid, what we're going to be using is the parallel axis theorem to solve for the moment of inertia. So if you don't recall, the parallel axis theorem is you solve for the moment of inertia of the first area plus the, the area of that one times the distance of the centroid of that first area to the neutral axis. That would be the distance and that would be squared and you add and you do the same for the, the next one, right? The moment of inertia for that cross-sectional area plus the area times the distance of this centroid to the neutral axis here squared. And so this is the parallel X theorem. Um, it's a lot of steps involved, but this is the equation. And so finally, here are, are all the values plugged in. It's pretty straightforward when solving for the moment of inertia, inertia, right? For these rectangular cross sections, we have the base times the height cubed divided by 12. And then the addition, adding the area times the distance of that. Now, when it comes to solving the distances from the centroid of that, each of the areas to the neutral axis, you could get a little bit creative. Sometimes it may take a little bit more time to... Um, be able to come up with it, but with more pra practices, it gets a little bit easier. So after plugging all those values in for the moment of inertia, we actually end up getting 1.561 times 10 to the negative 3 meters to the fourth power. So now we have all the necessary information. Let's go ahead and solve for the bending stress. So the bending stress is equivalent to the moment times C divided by moment of inertia. Plug in those values, we have the moment, we have C, we have the moment of inertia, and calculate, and we end up getting 1,786.7 kilopascals for the bending stress. Now, one thing to ask yourself, is this going to be um, the compressive stress or the tensile stress? Because depending on what exactly you're solving for, 
um, let's say you have a tensile stress and a compressive stress, and you also have an axial stress, sometimes you may end up um, having to subtract. But in this instance, since we're dealing with load downwards, it's going to be compressive stress for the axial stress and for the bending stress as well. Let's go ahead and look at the geometry of it, right? So if we look at the cross section here, you have the force being applied here. And so the moment is going to be this direction, right? And so because of that, the if you want to have a side view of the beam, let's just say for simplicity's sake, this is the side view of the beam. You have this force P being applied, which causes a, a moment this direction, right? And this is going to cause a bending this way. Of course, this is exaggerated bending, but you get the point. The top portion is going to be in compression, and the bottom portion is going to be in tension. And so in this case, since we know the maximum stress is going to be with the largest C value, it's the top is going to be compressive, but at the same time, the axial stress is also compressing it. So in this case, it will just be an addition, no need to subtract these values. So the maximum normal stress developed or the total stress is equal to 500. 55.6 kilopascals plus the 1,786.7, which gives us a total of 2,342 kilopascals or 2.3 megapascals. And this is going to be the maximum normal stress developed in this object here. And so whenever solving these kinds of um, problems, when you have combined loading scenarios and you have to add up the stresses, just um, initially think about the problem, the load and how it's being applied to see what stresses are de developed. In this case, it's pretty obvious the axial stress, but the bending stress may not um, be so obvious at first. With more practice, it starts becoming more um, intuitive and so forth.